The Large Hadron Collider. It's a massive, beautiful piece of human ingenuity, engineering, and... <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not the LHC. This is the LHC. This is the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC for short. It's a 27-kilometer particle accelerator sitting under the border of France and Switzerland. It's an atom smasher, the biggest in the world, designed and built by thousands of engineers, scientists, and mathematicians from across our tiny planet with the goal of helping other scientists learn about things of incredibly small size by smashing them together. These smashings are called collisions. This is really all they're interested in. Yeah. They're interested in collisions, collisions, collisions. That's Mike Lamont. He's the operations group leader working on the LHC. It's his job to run BEAM. BEAM being nerdy lingo for bunches of hydrogen protons that fill up the LHC. The LHC is a ring containing two beams going in opposite directions. But if we look closer, that beam is actually made up of bunches of protons. In fact, each bunch has about 100 billion protons each. And these bunches are about 30 centimeters long. Um, typically about a millimeter di dimensions as they're going around the ring. And um, so think about a long, thin, tapered piece of spaghetti. Incredibly powerful superconducting magnets keep the beams flying at nearly the speed of light with the aim of making these proton bunches hit. We pass these thin hairs through each other and we get about 30 collisions. So most of, the, most of the protons just miss each other and they carry on around the ring. They come back, late, come back one turn later and they can do it again. And the reason why they miss each other is because atoms are mostly empty space. So getting them to collide is incredibly difficult. It would be like standing 10 kilometers apart and trying to shoot two needle-thin arrows at each other so they hit halfway. So the key is to do this a lot. The target this year, just to put it in context, is about 800 million collisions a second. So we really kind of, we have to work hard to get that rate. Hundreds of millions per second is insane. Imagine trying to control a proton traveling at nearly the speed of light. To keep the bunches on track, the LHC uses dipole magnets, or two magnets. But when they need to steer the protons, they use quadrupole magnets, or four one on each compass point, applying three to 400 metric tons of force per meter. So we take our, our pieces of spaghetti and focus them down with very strong quadrupole magnets, which act like lenses, to get them down to the diameter of a human hair as we pass them through, the, uh, through each other in the center of the ex experiments. And that is why the LHC is in the business of collisions. The LHC is sort of like your power company, but instead of providing electricity, they're generating collisions. More collisions, more better. They spend all their effort to try and get these bunches of hydrogen ions to hit inside of other scientists' experiments. Of course, having a collision is great, but if a proton collides in the woods and no one's there, does it make a boson? Who knows? The scientists still have to be watching at just the right fraction of a second to discover a new particle. That's where these experiments come in. They sit on the LHC ring at collision points, and they're probably what you think of when you hear Large Hadron Collider. The famous ones are ATLAS and CMS, which spotted the famous Higgs boson back in 2013. It's called CMS, compact muon solenoid. However, it really is not compact. No. It's a relative term, as you can see. <laughs> uh, nothing of that size is compact. Dr. Talika Bose sits in the control room of the CMS waiting for an exciting collision to happen inside her three-story science experiment, all thanks to the LHC. So they, they collide about 25 nanoseconds. So you have a bunch colliding with another bunch. You may have a proton here and a proton here, which has a hard what we call scattering, a hard event, and out of that comes out a whole mess of particles. This is what she's talking about. When two protons collide, it looks like this. To you and me, this may look like a whole mess of particle parts, but to Dr. Bose, this mess can actually tell you what's inside a proton. There are two important pieces of information that we get from this. One is whether it's curving this way or if it's curving that way. That tells us whether it's positively charged or negatively charged. And then how large is the radius of curvature? Because it could be curving like this or it could be curving in a much larger radius. And, and this has a direct uh, relationship with essentially what the velocity and consequently what the, the momentum of the particle mm -hmm. is. And this is why the LHC is awesome. Dr. Bose is basically watching millions of proton car crashes in order to reverse engineer the automobile. 
Smashing atoms together can reveal what they're made of. But instead of injectors, plastic, steel, and glass, physicists find neutrons, kaons, pions, muons, and neutrinos. By the way, physicists call particles that are made of these things hadrons, hence the name Large Hadron Collider. Proton collisions like these help physicists reveal exactly what these tiny structures that make up our universe are made of. The technology is super advanced, but the science is the same as it's always been. We simply break things apart, hoping to understand how they tick. Before we went to the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, we were on top of planet Earth, 800 miles from the North Pole at the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. To find out what awesome science we were doing there, check out this video. You know, this is quite simply a, a hole in the mountain. <laughs> in there, you have actually 13,000 years history of agriculture. 